everyone. Welcome to another Claim Machine Live. We're live here on Amazon Live, on Facebook Live, and later you can view it on YouTube at Claim Machine Online. Thanks in advance for uh, any likes, uh, follows, uh, subscribes. But this video is very important and it's got some great information in it. So please consider sharing this. I want to get this information out to as many people as possible because there are a lot of people who don't know this information. Um, even plant-based doctors and physicians and practitioners, uh, people who are taking uh, other supplements that have preformed uh, EPA and DHA like algae and fish oil. So uh, very important information here. I appreciate you sharing it because it's I really just want to get the, the information out to people who can make a difference in their lives um, by doing the right thing. Um, for those of you watching on uh, Facebook and later on Clean Machine, the, uh, some of the images will be posted. For those of you watching on Amazon Live, I will read out anything that is not posted on the screen because I haven't figured out how to post them on the screen on Amazon Live yet. Hopefully we'll. Um, so a disclaimer, this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So what is the study we're talking about? This is a, this is a pretty, pretty amazing study because it really changes a lot of the viewpoints on what we assumed about omega-3s. Um, so first off, for those of you who are just getting new and new to watching me, there are actually technically only two essential fatty acids, and that is omega-3 ALA and omega-3 LA, which is omega-6, rather, LA. So those are the two essential fatty acids. That means we have to get them from our food. Our body can take those two and convert them to all the other different forms of omega-3s, like EPA and DHA, but also SDA and ETA and DPA. So all of the forms of omega-3s can be converted from that ALA, but we, our bodies cannot make that ALA, which is why they're called essential fatty acids. So technically, EPA and DHA are what they call non-essential. They're not essential for us to get them in our diet or in supplementation. I know that's kind of weird to sound for some of you because they assume, oh, I have to take my omega-3s. Yes, you do have to consume omega-3, but the only one that you have to consume is ALA. EPA and DHA, you do not have to consume. There is no physiological need, human need, for anyone to take a preformed EPA or DHA supplement or to get it in, in, in foods like fish. There's none, zero. And that you can ask any dietitian. You can type it into Google and you'll see that that is the truth. <laughs> that is the absolute truth about essential fatty acids, specifically omega-3s and omega-6. So the big assumption then was, okay, but fish is better because it's got the preformed versions and it appears from the research that um, ALA doesn't convert to DHA, which is important for our brain. Actually, uh, most of the DHA ends up in our brain, uh, stores a lot of it. So the question was, are we converting enough ALA to DHA to promote brain health? Now, this study really paints an entirely different picture because the assumptions were they were mostly looking at uh, blood. So how much DHA is actually circulating in the bloodstream? Well, this study shows that's not where the DHA conversion is happening by and large. And it also shows that this conversion of the DHA is happening on an as-need basis. So what are the real needs? Let's back up. Let me start with the current method of measures of DHA from ingested ALA are typically about 1% of the oral D, uh, ALA. So that's what kind of scared people. They're like, whoa, only 1% of the ALA is being converted? Is that enough? And that's where the concern was, the fear started. Oh, we better take DHA in the preformed because this doesn't appear to be enough. Only 1% conversion? So let's, let's back up a little bit. 
Now, what happens to ALA when it gets into the system? Well, this is the this is the interesting thing. And this is true with almost all of the omega 3s. When you take omega 3s, about 70, up to 70% of those omega 3s are actually just burned, or what they call beta oxidation. They're burned for energy. Right. <laughs> So why on earth would the body take something that is vital to our heart health, to our brain health, even to our muscle health? EPA actually uh, plays a role in mTOR, which is the, the pathway that we actually build muscle with. So why on earth would our body just be burning off as energy, something that it can get energy from protein or carbs or sugars or anything else from? Why would it be using it for energy? 70% of it for energy. It's because we need so little. And that's what's interesting that's pointed out in this study. So they asked then, okay, what is the amount of DHA that is needed for the brain on a daily basis? Well, that turns out to be estimated at only 2.4 to 3.8 milligrams. Not grams, milligrams. That's a thousandth of a gram. <laughs> Two to three milligrams, 3.8 milligrams, a day for humans. So that's a tiny little amount. So then they did the math and they said, well, wait a minute. If the average per person is consuming around 1,500 milligrams or 1,700 milligrams a, a day just on average intake from, from foods and from supplementation, well, then what does that add to? Well, they looked at based on current estimates of a male taking 1,700 milligrams the percent of conversion of ALA to DHA would need to be 0.14%, up to 0.2%. So 0.1 to 0.2%. Now, they were worried about the ALA conversion measured in the blood at 1%. And this is a 0.1% is all that's required for all of the brain's needs. So wait a minute, that's 10 to up to 10 times as much than our brain actually needs is being converted from ALA to DHA. <laughs> okay, so is that really the case? So next they looked at um, uh, what is happening to this ALA. So they did um, uh, studies on animals, and I'm sorry, I am not for animal testing. I hope it ends, it's unnecessary. But right now, there are some animal tests that give us information that could help us make changes and improve and save lives. Um, so I'm going to cite the information. I am not, uh, trust me, I am anti-animal testing. But anyway, back to the animal test. So they, they looked at animals and they, they deprived them, basically, uh, of all sources of preformed EPA or DHA and fed them exclusively ALA. And then they measured the amount of DHA in the brain exactly the same as those that were taking DHA. No difference, none. So wait a minute. <laughs> if you're taking DHA, why aren't the levels actually higher in the brain than those taking ALA? That would make sense, right? You actually have more DHA. That's where this assumption came from, that if you take more DHA, you'll have more DHA. And that's not what's going on in the brain. What the brain is doing is actually taking ALA and storing it throughout the body, storing it in fat tissues. I'm gonna pull up a little picture. For those of you watching on Facebook Live, you'll now see a picture of the consumption of ALA going into the bloodstream and then being stored in the brain, in the fat cells, and in fat in liver. Why the liver? Why the brain? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in just a second. So. These fat cells, obviously, where do you store fat? In fat cells, that's a great place to store it. So what the body is doing is regulating its conversion of ALA to DHA on an as-need basis. That's why so little DHA is actually showing up at the bloodstream at any given time, because the body is just releasing it, converting it in the fat tissues, in the liver, in the brain, in the fat cells, and then releasing it into the bloodstream and quickly getting absorbed in and utilized in the brain when it needs it. So interestingly, the, in the study, they, they said, okay, what if we deplete the body of DHA and we just fed ALA, what would happen? 
the brain repletes itself all the way back to full, goes from zero to full amounts of DHA just with the ALA. This shows us there's actually no need whatsoever to take DHA for the brain, that the body converts ALA when it needs it. Not only that, it stores this ALA and it stores DHA. So DHA conversion can happen at a big level in the liver. So the liver can convert all this DHA, send it to the brain and then get stored in brain fatty tissues. So it's not circulating in the bloodstream. It's actually sitting there in fat cells in the brain, in the liver or in the body and says, when do you need it? You need a little bit right now, Boop. release it. Gets right to the brain and the brain needs it. They've showed that taking high amounts of DHA actually did not affect brain levels of DHA because the body is regulating it. It's constantly keeping even. Now, the reason for this is for survival. So if we are in nature, right? If we are running around naked as free human beings way before civilization, we would have a supply of food that is high in nuts. Nuts are a great source of ALA. So our body ends up storing all these as fat, right? Omega-3s as fat. And then when we're like, oh God, you know, the summer is dry, there's no fruits, there's no, no dark greens or whatever, we're gonna have to eat twigs or whatever. Then there are, our intake of uh, omega-3s is really low. So now our body can say, oh great, I'll take some of that ALA that's stored in the fat and start converting it as little bit as it needed and regulate and keep a homeostasis. That means even levels of DHA in the brain. So this is really cool. That means the body has an internal regulatory system. All we have to do is give it the one essential fat it needs, ALA. Give it that and it will regulate the flow and amounts throughout the whole body for the brain, for the heart, for the muscle tissues. It regulates it endogenously. <clears throat> so it has this complex system of regulation where it converts what it needs when it needs it, but it actually pre-converts some and stores it in fat tissues. So it has that DHA just sitting there ready to go in the brain. So if your intake drops too low on a certain day, no worries, the body's got backup storages. This is a way of protection for survival to keep our brains at a homeostasis level of omega-3s so that our brain never starts to dysfunction. As a matter of fact, they tried just completing omega-3s almost completely from the body. And even then the body took a long time to actually get into a state of deficiency. That's how much of this is being actually stored. And that's the reason why up to 70% of those omega-3s and omega-6s are actually just being burned off for energy. So this whole fear that you can't get uh, because of this low conversion that was happening in the bloodstream of 1% conversion is actually way more than we need. And it's actually being stored. So the only thing we really need to be concerned with is ALA consumption. And that's why I'm really excited because we have one of the best sources of ALA and SDA. Now, SDA is what ALA converts to. It converts immediately to SDA, and then it converts to um, ETA, and then EPA, and then DHA down the road. So that's where it starts at. So if you got the first two guys, ALA and SDA, which, by the way, are both anti-inflammatory. So ALA, um, ahi flower, is actually the richest source of ALA and SDA combined. Also a good source of anti-inflammatory GLA, which is an omega-6. And it's the anti-inflammatory version of omega-6, not the pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid. That you can get from animal, eating animal products. This has anti-inflammatory DGLA or GLA and ALA and SDA, all three anti-inflammatory. And that's why people love this product so much. If you've got problems with joint tissues, problems with um, inflammation, things like this, amazing for that because of this. So not only your omega-3s, 
in your ALA state, which converts to DHA for the brain, but EPA for muscle tissue. Most people don't know that EPA is really important for muscle growth. It actually plays a role in mTOR, which is the chemical process of our body taking in amino acids and converting them into proteins to build muscle tissue. And EPA plays a role in that. This has a four times higher EPA conversion than flax. That's clinically proven published human study. Amazing. And then I wanted a protein that had naturally occurring ALA in it. This protein actually just one scoop because it's in its whole food state with the whole food glentine. It's a green plant, a freshwater flowering plant, plant that is high in omega-3s. Actually, just one scoop of this um, will give you 34% of your entire day's worth of omega-3s in ALA form, the one essential fatty acid form that your body actually really needs. That's in there. So you combine uh, the eye flower omega-3 with your clean green protein, you are set for the day. You don't have to take flax, chia, hemp, any of those other things. No algae oil. Yes. So what happens when you take these preformed? Well, it's how do I explain this? So our body likes to go through its conversion steps because it only converts exactly what it needs when and where it needs it in each specific tissue. So that's an important piece. When you take a preform, that means it's made outside of the body. The fish makes it or the algae makes it all the way down, converts it all the way down to EPA or DHA. And then you just pile that onto the system. The body is now out of balance. It didn't make that. Remember, the body can make all of the forms, all six of the forms, all five of the other forms of uh, omega-3s. Your body can take ALA, then convert it to SDA, EPA. I'm going to throw up that conversion chart for those of you uh, watching on there. So this is how it works. It goes um, ALA at the top, then SDA, then ETA, then EPA, DPA, then DHA at the bottom. Why is that at the bottom? Because it's the very last thing because the body needs so little of it. And that's why you put that conversion rate at the bottom there. It's because your body probably actually needs more of the other, um, and, and many of the studies show we need at least a two to one convert um, amounts for functionality in the body. Obviously, EPA is used by the muscle. There's a lot more muscle in volume and, and weight and, and cells than there are brain cells. Um, for most people, most healthy people, let's put it that way. Um, so uh, are there uh, extreme conditions where somebody is genetically just not making the right uh, enzyme and can't convert that DHA? Yes, there is, a, but for the 99.9% .9 of the rest of the population, those in healthy adults, um, you can get all that you need just by starting with the ALA. Let the body change those forms when and where it needs it store it in those fat tissues so that your body never runs out and has it quick for feeding uh, the tissues when and where it needs it. This is an amazing study. They did, so one of the cool things about this study is they used a new method. So most of the methods were mostly looking at traceability in the bloodstream. Well, that's not where this, this conversion rate is taking place. So they came up with a new method. It's a carbon isotope or stable isotope method. So they combine the isotope with the ALA, and then it traces through the body. We can trace that isotope to see where it's going, when it's breaking down, when it's converting, and where it's converting that. And that's how we started to find out that these conversions were happening in the tissues, not in the bloodstream. So this new methodology really explodes the old methodology that was looking, one, in the wrong place. So one, they were looking in the tissue and the bloodstream, not in the tissues where the vast majority of the conversion is taking place. And two, they were only looking at the time of ingestion. And that's not the case. Here's an interesting thing. They showed through this isotope tracing that the body can actually take ALA and store it in the fat tissues for up to a year, a year, you hold on to that ALA. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's our bodies conserving precious materials and holding on to it and putting it in storage 
So that's a beautiful thing. And this carbon isotope method showed that our body's DHA synthesis and uptake rates were actually up to three times higher than what we were looking at in previous methods of testing. So, so it was the testing that really got us all wrong. It was these assumptions that you had to have these preformed states because it was based on, oh, animals have this already pre-converted. Well, what are we? We're the animal. We can do the pre-conversion too, right inside our body. But our body has a beautiful, elegant uh, uh, regulatory system that does the conversion, stores extra that we need, and then converts it when and where we need it. So this is called the DHA endogenous regulation homeostasis. So that the body maintains that homeostasis, that equilibrium, that perfect amount in the brain all the time by hanging on to these omega-3s as we consume them. So still very important to get your omega-3s and making sure that we're getting sufficient amounts of a, uh, ALA omega-3 and LA omega-6 from plants. Remember, plants are the only ones that make ALA and LA. These essential fats are only made by plants, and we only need to get them from plants. There is zero essential fatty acid need to get any of your essential fatty acids from, well, they don't actually, don't even exist in, in animals. They exist in, in, in forms that are already converted, because that's exactly what we do. We as an animal take this plant ALA and convert it into all the forms our body needs. So to, to kind of uh blow your mind on what we actually need it was interesting when they looked at the assumption of actual estimation of stored dha in the body at any given time this is a healthy adult with a healthy consumption of ala omega-3 they found remember what our brains need is two to four milligrams is what our brain needs on a daily basis the amount of stored DHA they found was 20 to 50 grams. <laughs> That's 20 to 50,000 milligrams. And you need two to four milligrams for your brain function. Do you think that's an issue that you need to consume DHA? No, chances are that DHA supplement you're taking from algae or fish is only <laughs> getting burned up and used for energy. So if you want a fat source for energy, yeah, you can buy the supplements, but you don't need to. What you really need is that ALA, let the body do the conversion, keep it in homeostasis, convert it when and where it needs it, deliver it to the tissues that it needs. It does this all by itself. You do not need to interfere with trying to dump preformed versions of this in there and disrupting the whole endogenously inside our body regulated system. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, and if this resonates with you, this is an amazing study. I'm going to read the title of the study for those of you watching on Amazon. The study is called, Is Dicosohexanoic Acid, which is DHA, but that's the long actual word for it, is DHA acid synthesis from alpha linolenic acid or ALA. So is DHA acid synthesis from ALA sufficient to supply the adult brain? That's the title of that. You wanna Google that study. Uh, for those of you at home, I've posted in the comments section. Um, uh, those of you watching on Clean Machine Online or Facebook Live, I'll post it in the comments section. So you can click on the link. This is a revolutionary study that totally changes what we know about essential fatty acids, omega-3s and omega-6, specifically DHA and the conversion rates and what our body's doing with this. There is going to be an amazing study coming out later this year. I know because I'm talking with one of the researchers directly on, on the study that is going to just shatter this myth. It'll show that ALA converts rapidly and efficiently to DHA on an as-need basis. So the one, the body doesn't need so much. 
Two, it won't convert way more than it needs because that's just not necessary. And even it does convert extra and stores it in fat tissues so that it's instantly available and that our bodies never fluctuate regardless of our intake. So this is similar to what we've seen in essential amino acids, that our body actually pools some of these essential amino acids. Our body is in a rotational, it's called protein turnover. So when cells die, when different cells in our body die and get sloughed off, like cells in our stomach that get replaced constantly, uh, cells that are our microbiome that die in our microbiome and we absorb them, break them down. So there's lots of protein that's being turned over, being recycled. So our body maintains a pool of essential amino acids. That way, when you consume a protein that may be a little lower in a specific amino acid, the body says, no worries, I got, I'll, I'll take some from the pool, add it to that, and then we can go ahead and make the proteins. This is our body's way of maintaining a homeostasis, a balance of essential amino acids in our body so that when there are fluctuations in what we're actually eating and consuming, whether it's essential fatty acids or essential amino acids, notice they're both essential meaning we have to get them for food, but they're essential for our life. Because our body sees that those are so important, it pools, it stores essential fatty acids in our fat, and it pools essential amino acids around our tissues so that it has a good pool to call from when there are fluctuations in our diet. This helps maintain the preservation of the tissues, maintain the body's functions so it can uh, perfectly uh, and, and in a balanced way, maintain this. So these assumptions that, oh, you aren't getting enough of this amino acid from that plant at that meal. So what? It doesn't matter. Oh, you're not getting enough of the DHA. Yes, you actually are because the body is doing the conversion and the body is actually storing it when it doesn't convert it so that there is no risk there. What you just need is a good steady state of essential amino acids in lots of different variety of plant foods and in, uh, in, in, in whole plants, your essential fatty acids like ALA and SDA found in uh, clean green protein and ahi flour. So there are other functions for omega-3s other than structural functions, which we just talked about for the brain, for the heart, for the muscle, there are anti-inflammatory. So there are reasons for the body to use anti-inflammatory for joint health, for um, in inflammation for, caused by immune functions. Um, the body does some pro-inflammatory conditions to try to kill off bacteria, viruses, and, and invaders. So there is a good reason for inflammation. We need to bring that inflammation down having a good supply of anti-inflammatory omega-3s and omega-6s. Remember, a lot of people assume omega-6 is pro-inflammatory. It's not. AL, uh, LA, which is the plant-based omega-3, and its direct conversion, which is GLA or DGLA, these are both anti-inflammatory. Now, when it converts to its final step, arachidonic acid, that's when it can become inflammatory, but our body actually regulates the production. So it only converts that plant-based LA down to um, arachidonic acid when it needs a proper inflammatory response, like when you're sick or when you work out, you stress the muscle and it needs to be healed and repaired, then you have some pro-inflammatory. That's that swelling state and getting all swole. That's actually a little bit of pro-inflammation going on, but that actually triggers the body to respond, to build more muscle, build more strength. So you want that pro-inflammatory state, but the body regulates that. It holds on to LA and it's LA or DGLA, which is uh, uh, anti-inflammatory omega-6, and it only converts it to pro-inflammatory when you need it. Now, conversely, when you eat animal products, that conversion rate is all the way happened, all the way down to arachidonic acid. And now when you eat an animal product, it's got arachidonic acid. That's pro-inflammatory. Now you add that to the body and the body says, whoa, I didn't, I didn't make that. I didn't convert that uh, LA down all the way down to arachidonic acid. So the body ends up being in a constant pro-inflammatory state because you're eating this arachidonic acid that is in animal tissues, in animal products, meat, uh, fish, poultry, 
all these things have pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid that the body didn't make and it can't regulate it. It's already converted all the way down to its last level. If you let the body give it just the omega-6 found in plants, they're anti-inflammatory until the body needs pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid, then it converts it when it needs it. So it never sends the body into a, a chronic pro-inflammatory. That can only happen by consuming animal products. That pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid is found in animals, just like us. We create arachidonic acid from the anti-inflammatory versions of LA, uh, LA uh, and DGLA. So that's where it comes from. And it's omega-6 is getting a bad rap is pro-inflammatory and it is not if you're consuming it from plants. Now, if you're consuming arachidonic acid, omega-6 in animal products, that is 100% pro-inflammatory. So that's the pro-inflammation that we get. Why are you seeing so, pro, so many pro-inflammation states by consuming animal products? I hope this information resonates with you because I really want to get this out because there, I feel there are a lot of people that are living in fear, thinking that uh, ALA does not convert to DHA in sufficient quantities for the brain and taking a, a preformed omega-3 like fish oil or algae, and it's totally unnecessary. Chances are you're just burning that off for energy and then you're not utilizing the, the way the body intends it you need to confirm that one essential fatty acid in its ALA and SDA states. Those are only found in plants. So now you know the truth about omega-3s. I hope you share this information because I think there's a lot of people wasting their money, wasting their time, and actually putting preformed sources that disrupt the regulatory balance that our body is trying to regulate. And that can cause problems. Those problems are yet to be defined uh, clinically in studies yet, but we've already seen that um, when there are imbalances, too much EPA or DHA, they can lead to problematic states in several different things. I published that uh, research in previous studies, so check out my other studies on omega-3, my other videos rather, on omega-3s to find those studies about uh, the imbalances that can cause by taking preform sources and how that disrupts our regulatory system and actually can create things like high blood pressure and offset different diabetic states too as well, which are not good and it disrupts our own body's regulation of those so it can keep it in perfect balance and, and homeostasis. So if you really like this video, please, please share it because I need to get this information out. Not because of the products. Look, the products are great. I offer them to you uh, right here on Amazon. You can get them right on, uh, you can purchase them um, on Amazon. But I really want this uh, to get out there because there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of miseducation about the truth. And these studies are finally using the right methodology with isotope tracing, using the right uh, instruments to measure that we actually have up to 20 to 50 grams of stored DHA in our bodies at any given time, that our body is using it on an as-need basis. And even though the DHA conversion is low, it's greater than what our brain and body needs. So there's not going to be a sufficient if you are getting sufficient form of uh, amounts of ALA from plant sources. Please share. I really want to get this out, especially to many of the practitioners and doctors who I think uh, could be giving out uh, incorrect information. This is the latest research. This is the latest methodology, and it's telling a completely different story about omega-3s uh, and even uh, especially on DHA, so important for the brain. Thanks again. I hope you can join us next week. We'll have much more great studies and research to go over, as well as nutritional uh, opportunities to take a look at how you can improve your nutrition, your health, and your fitness to be in the best shape you are. I'm 58 years old, been vegan for 36 years, natural bodybuilding and physique champion. You can do it too. And live long and prosper. Thanks for joining me.